Hello and welcome, I'm Sim UK and today I'm going to be reviewing Train Sim World's latest DLC, Main Spetsat Bar, or MSB. Is this review for you? Well, only if you're looking for ultimate realism in your gaming. If you like arcade easy games, then no, this is likely not the right review for you, and you should probably look elsewhere. That being said, everyone is welcome here, and I do respect and appreciate all thoughts and opinions, so I do encourage you to leave me feedback in the comments section below. Please remember if you enjoy this video or find it helpful that uh, hitting that like button helps me a huge amount and only takes one second of your time. So, Main Speset Barn or MSB was released on the 21st of February 2019 and at full price this game will set you back $24.99 which is the customary price for all DLCs relating to Train Sim World. If you hang about for a little bit you may well find that it drops to about £12.50 or indeed if you pick it up before release date you can find it for about 50% less. First of all let me just say that um, I am an absolute sucker for the German Rail DLCs. I don't know why exactly, I just really like them a lot. And truth be told, this is probably the best DLC that Train Sim World have released. So why is it then that I'm not going to recommend this DLC to you? Are you surprised? I know I am. Up to and including about 24 hours ago, I would have recommended this DLC, but after many, many hours of relatively happy gameplay, the rose-tinted glasses disintegrated and I suddenly realised what it was that I was looking at. And now I cannot, in good conscience, recommend this DLC to you. It's not because it's particularly bad, and it's not because it isn't as good or even better than previous Train Sim World DLCs, which I have and still do arguably recommend. It's because I have seen a pattern emerge here, a pattern which highlights the totally illogical and indeed at times very questionable business practices from Dovetail Games and once you see it, you simply cannot unsee it. Let me tell you what this DLC actually offers. As we have all come to expect, the locomotive, wagon and carriage modelling is of a very high standard, but there is evidence of copy and paste being used with some of the textures and some of the areas, which is quite disappointing. Indeed, some of the locomotives in this DLC are actually cut and paste copied directly from the RSN DLC, yet there doesn't seem to be any reflection of this in the price. The in-cab locomotive audio in this DLC is, for me, unquestionably the best that Train Sim World have produced. It's almost 3D, it's extremely authentic, and it does a huge amount for my immersion levels. Unfortunately, the external locomotive audio is a bit less impressive, and the ambient audio is completely unchanged, by which I mean has been copied and pasted from every single DLC ever released. And there are, unfortunately, many, many audio and visual bugs that I have experienced within this DLC that totally detract from the improved and immersive locomotive audio. The route itself is 52 kilometers long, which is in alignment with all of Trainsim World's DLCs. And like all that precede this DLC, it is just too short. I thought that the point of using the Unreal Engine meant that there would be no restrictions to track length. So where are the expansion DLCs to extend the DLC routes that I now already own? Let me put it this way, Dovetail. I would rather have one train that I could drive 500 miles than 500 trains that I can only drive 50 kilometers in. That being said, the surrounding track has a decent amount of new and unique objects and the design is actually the best I've seen yet. It is so good in fact that it's almost authentic. But as you get further away from the track, there is much less to be grateful for. Vehicles are another welcome addition with this DLC and all bar one area where the road suddenly disappears, this has been an enhancement to realism.
The 24 hour services are basically the bread and butter for Train Sim World. And I have to say, I do appreciate and respect this design idea. In this DLC, there are a huge number of services available. Over 300, I believe, not that I've counted them or anything. But in all honesty, so far at least, I do see a lot of repetition and similarities in these services. So if we're being honest, then there are not 300 unique services available, but a handful of services spread out across a 24 hour period. As things stand right now, there is also no timetable available for this DLC. So when you're playing in the services arena, your arrival time is whenever you get there. What kind of a train service arrives when it arrives? This isn't India, after all, this is Germany. That kind of thing shouldn't be permitted. The timetable is coming, but when? Is it a priority for Dovetail Games? Or are we as consumers just expected to sit and wait quietly like good little boys and girls? Honestly guys, there is so much more I would like to discuss and highlight about this DLC, but because I cannot afford to be a full-time YouTuber anymore, I have much less time available. So I'm going to simply have to cut this review short and explain to you exactly why I do not recommend that you buy this DLC. I absolutely love Train Sim World. To a point, you understand. Perhaps I should say, I really, really respect what they have achieved. That's probably a better way of putting it. Either way, without doubt, this is the best train simulation available on the planet. And unfortunately, there are no viable competitors to Train Sim World. And as such, Dovetail Games have become complacent in my opinion. Without a viable competitor to drive standards and encourage excellence, Train Sim World could eventually fail. So if you don't want Train Sim World and indeed Dovetail Games to fail and disappear forever, then it is the likes of you and I who must hold them accountable and point out where they are going wrong, speak our minds and encourage them to change before it becomes too late. What I have recently come to realize, and this is in the last 24 hours, this DLC, like all DLCs before it, is nothing more than a band-aid for the main Train Sim World title. At worst, it's a temporary cash cow. In fact, I do question if these DLCs actually qualify as DLCs at all. The official definition of a DLC is thus. Downloadable content is additional content created for a released video game. The key point being additional content. What it's not meant to include is changes to core features. There are a number of improvements in this DLC over previously released Train Sim World DLCs. But if you don't buy this DLC, then you won't get to experience them. Not in the core title or any of the other DLCs. The improvements are specific to this DLC. That is not what I call a DLC. And I'm not convinced that this is an acceptable practice. Are you? Some of the improvements in this DLC, like, for example, the enhanced locomotive audio or the ability to lean out of a window, are, in my humble opinion, core mechanic improvements. And as such, they should emanate from the core game and thereby filter through to all of the previous and existing DLCs. Every DLC should benefit from core improvements. But as it stands, if you don't buy this DLC, you don't get them at all. The question this raises for me relates to the game's internal structure. If this game has been coded well, then core feature enhancements should be reflected in all content. Sure, 
there might be some alterations and adjustments required for each previous DLC in order to align with the new design, but so be it. Let's be honest, Dovetail Games do not have a particularly good track record with going back and fixing previously broken stuff. By buying this DLC, you might well argue that you are in turn supporting Dovetail Games and Trains in World so that they can deliver on the promises that they made nearly two years ago when CSX Heavy Hall first arrived. But I don't agree. I think you are encouraging this behaviour to continue. By buying this DLC or any future DLC, you are in fact encouraging this behaviour to continue. So disconnected are the CSX Heavy Hall original from all of the so-called DLCs which have followed, I am actually starting to question if they are even the same game anymore. Perhaps CSX Heavy Hall was itself a DLC, and there is actually no core game whatsoever. I will have to go back and check, but I'm pretty sure that some of the features, some of the really impressive aspects that were available in CSX Heavy Hall are no longer available. It seems to me that Dovetail Games are cutting corners and reducing complexity with each DLC they release. This game is working its way away from being a simulator and more towards becoming an arcade game. That is not what I invested in. That is not what I want to see. And I think the only way to make Dovetail Games sit up and listen is for all of us as a community to speak as one and almost embargo purchasing any further DLC that doesn't adhere to, align with, or in some way improve what we've already got. There are a number of things that should have been delivered by now and I'm not hearing anything from Dovetail Games to suggest that these things are coming anytime soon. So unless you like the carrot on a stick approach, I think you need to like this video and maybe share your thoughts with Dovetail Games. I'm SimUK, thank you for watching this video today. If you want to see more in-depth reviews like this, then I need to see some likes on this video. Please make sure that you do subscribe and turn on alerts so that you can be notified of any future reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.